Uh, Paul DiRienzo is with us. He's an independent journalist working under a grant from the George Polk Awards, and he's investigating the Hanford nuclear site. His uh, Twitter is P Direnzo, D E R I E N Z O, P Direnzo. Uh, Paul, welcome. Thank you, Tom. Not really nice to be here. Thank you thank for you. Jo- thank you for joining us. So uh, there was a pipe explosion at the Hanford. First of all, let's let's explain to everybody what the Hanford nuclear site is. Sure. The Hanford nuclear site was one of the crown jewels of the Manhattan Project. And later on, it was used. I'm sorry, I'm hearing a, an echo. It's sort of, a, it, thank you very much. And the, uh, the Hanford site was part of the Manhattan Project. And it was specifically the part of the Manhattan Project that was used to produce plutonium. And plutonium is a transuranic element, a man-made discovered element that is used, it, pretty much its only real use, uh, 99.9% of its use is to make the most powerful explosives uh, humanly possible. And it was used to make the bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki and also for the Trinity test bomb. So those were uh, plutonium-fueled weapons. And then it later on made about two-thirds of all the plutonium that was produced in the United States military uh, apparatus during the Cold War. And it's also the most toxic substance on Earth. I remember back in the 70s when John Goffman was getting the uh, Committee, uh, the Union of Concerned Scientists going, um, sure. writing a piece about how one cup or one, maybe it was one pound, uh, and they might be the same thing, of plutonium, if evenly distributed around the planet, would be enough to kill every human on Earth because basically one particle inhaled uh, is uh, almost inevitably going to lead to cancer within the next decade. Yeah, it it uh, it's a it's a alpha emitter. So actually, plutonium is interesting in that you could probably hold it in your bare hand and it would feel warm, and that would not kill you because the alpha particles could not penetrate your skin. But if one minuscule particle of it were to actually be inhaled into your body, uh, there's models you can see on the internet. There's plenty on the, on uh, various uh, sites you can see the models. Uh, where one tiny piece of plutonium irradiates literally hundreds of thousands of cells around it constantly and incessantly year after year after year. And the radiation, when it inter- it almost has an affinity radiation in general for DNA. It, it just it seems to be, for some reason that's not fully understood, attracted into human DNA and where it damages the DNA. And cancer is definitely one of those uh, possible uh, outcomes. Um, Interesting to note that the reason we know that radiation causes cancer is because humans and our medical establishment has an, in, an interest in cancer being a terrible disease, and we know more about it than many of the diseases that uh, that affect humans, and therefore we don't really know all the things that radiation does to people. Yeah, yeah. The the for example, the kidney disease and whatnot. But in in any case, uh, and 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 that particle of plutonium could be as small as a single atom. Uh, but, right. So, so we've established what plutonium is and and what the Hanford nuclear site uh, was. Uh, it's still there. What's going on there? It's uh, 560 square miles. It had, its height had nine reactors, nine major plutonium producing reactors operating until 1987, when the last, the end reactor, the last reactor was shut down. Uh, similar to the Chernobyl reactor, after Chernobyl occurred, there was a tremendous outcry in this country, and uh, and finally they shut down the last reactor. In 1986, a reporter for the Spokane uh, Review newspaper um, got a Freedom of Information Act and was able to find out, uh, get 19,000 pages of classified documents released, and for the first time in 1986, it was the first time America knew really what was going on at Hanford, truly what was going on, and we still don't know only a small part of it, but uh, hundreds of thousands of documents have been released since then, and we still only know a little bit about what happened there. Um, and now the cleanup begins. And uh, the cleanup will take, right now it's, pers- it's being pursued along the riverfront where they've closed down the reactors. They cannot be fully demolished for 75 years. It takes that long for the radiation to die down. Um, that's one part of it. The radioactive tons, uh, millions of cubic feet of low activity waste, uh, 50, 60 million gallons of high radioactive waste that's in tanks hidden under the ground there for decades, 40 years, way beyond the life- lifespan of the of the tanks, what they were designed for 20 years now, it's been 40, 50 years or more. 
They're leaking. Over a million gallons have been admitted to, but much more than that is leaked. Um, there is uh, radiation, even to this day, leaking into the river, leaking into the air, leaking into the ground. And wait, huge... wait a second. If, the, if, these, uh, if the, these are plants that are designed to produce plutonium, presumably plutonium is part of what's leaking? Every single compound known to man. Wow. Every element, every compound, every radioactive ever devised is in that soup. And that's why it's been so difficult to clean up. At Savannah River, the cleanup has gone much quicker. But at Hanford, they have serious, serious problems with the cleanup because they just don't know what to do with the, uh, with the chemicals. And it's not just radioactive chemicals. There's other chromium, many, many, many toxic tritium, which is radioactive. But there's many, many toxic chemicals, and many of them are not well understood and they've been leaching into the environment now for close to 70 years wow now most and, uh, recently there was a, a a pipe explosion there do i have this right yes that's the most recent one it seems like every month or so there's another uh leak or disaster a couple of months ago it was one of the double shell tanks which were supposed to not be leaking was discovered to have been leaking uh this explosion that happened we didn't hear about it until several weeks 14 days after the explosion it was a small little pop which, of course, might have released plutonium because it happened in the plutonium finishing plant, which was the factory building that was used to actually machine the plutonium before it was sent out to uh, Los Alamos to be fixed into a bomb. And, um, and so uh, there's plutonium everywhere. It's, uh, you discover it sometimes by accident. Mm -hmm. uh, they opened a safe once that was found in a garbage dump, and inside the safe was a bottle of liquid, liquefied plutonium. Wow. Had been there since 1945 and had been forgotten about. And the half life of plutonium is something like a quarter of a billion years or something, isn't it? Is, 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 20, well, the half life is 24,000 years, and 10 times the half life is the, the, how long it's dangerous. So it's dangerous for 240,000 years. Other substances so, are probably uh, more dangerous million. as they have more of a direct effect on our health are strontium and cesium. Strontium right. 90, cesium. Uh, both are calcium analogs. They're just like calcium to the body, and so the body tends to put them right into your bones. Right. So your bones... Well, cesium, the doesn't the body think the cesium is potassium? Uh, I believe calcium. And so it goes into the muscles? Uh, that might okay. be as well, too. Yeah. I mean, these are similar. It's a small group of elements that are involved in life, the life cycle, right. and when these other elements get into the body, and the body thinks they're the, the worst is iodine which has a relatively short half-life of eight days. So in 80, uh, basically in 1945 to 19, early 1950s, a huge amount of, uh, of iodine was released, some of it uh, by the government on purpose as part of human experimentation over the entire state of, of, of Washington, in which hundreds of thousands of people were purposely uh, dosed with uh, radioactive iodine. Hmm. And uh, those came out in the documents. And th that was done on numerous occasions, right up into the 1960s or later, for all we know. Yeah. Uh, and there were it, 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 several books on the subject, extensive uh, uh, extensive experimentation on humans was done. Amazing. Period. Amazing stuff. Um, Paul Durenza, Durenzia. Durenza. Durenzo. Durenzo. Thank you P very much. Durenzo is my, uh, my Twitter handle. P. Durenzo. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks so much for sharing the information with us. Thank you. And for the great uh, investigative reporting you're doing. We'll be back. This is the Tom Hartman Program. This is uh, pretty bizarre stuff. It's uh, quite bizarre stuff. It ain't good. We'll be back.